Hi, family. I hope that you're well. It's good to be with you in this, uh, in this time, even though we are together virtually. It's good to, to be with you and to spend a few moments together. Um, today, I'd like to address you as a congregation and uh, give you an update as to what, uh, what might be happening or what is happening here at Emmanuel uh, in the uh, coronavirus chaos. Uh, life changes every day, and some things that we've said uh, one day have been irrelevant the next, and so it's, it's uncharted territory, not only for the church, but for businesses, for schools, uh, for the world around us. And so uh, together, uh, let's spend a few moments, and, and I will try to give you an update that, that helps you know where we are and where we at least think that we're going. You might ask about uh, my attire today, um, and it comes from a reading from First Peter, and I want to read that to you first uh, from Eugene Peterson's translation of the scriptures called The Message. Again, this is from First Peter chapter 1. What a God we have, and how fortunate we are to have him, this Father of our Master Jesus. Because Jesus was raised from the dead, we've been given a brand new life and have everything to live for, including the future in heaven. And the future starts now. God is keeping careful watch over us and the future. The day is coming when you'll have, when you'll have it all, life healed and whole. I know how great this makes you feel, even though you have put it, even though you have to put up with every kind of aggravation in the meantime. Gold put in the furnace comes out of it proved pure. Gen faith put through this suffering comes out proved genuine. When Jesus wraps this all up, it's your faith not your gold, that God will have on display as evidence of his victory. The NRSV translates it this way. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. By his great mercy, he has given us a new birth into a living hope through the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead and in into an inheritance that is imperishable, undefiled, and unfading, kept in heaven for you, who are being protected by the power of God through faith for a salvation ready to be revealed in the last times. You have an inheritance that is imperishable, undefiled, and unfading. It's like a crown. It's like a crown of righteousness. And so thus, the get up today. So since this, uh, this whole virus chaos started, I, I've been saying this. As followers of Jesus, on one hand, we are not called to be self-protectionists. We are called to give our life away. We're called to imitate Jesus, to take up the cross, to follow him, and to give our life away to our neighbors, uh, to our families, to the world around us. We are, to call, we are called to give our lives away. On the other hand, so that's one hand. On the other hand, we're also called to be good stewards, good stewards of our body, good stewards of our neighbor, good stewards of creation. And so it's in that tension that we live these days. We live in that tension of being good stewards and giving our lives away. As, as decisions have to be made in that tension, myself and your church council leadership, uh, we do that prayerfully. And we do that carefully. And we do that with the most vulnerable in mind. And so we have, uh, from that starting place, we have, uh, we have decided... And my guess is you've heard this already, that we've decided that we will no longer have in-person gatherings for worship. Instead, we are switching to online, uh, online experiences for worship and 
continuing our radio ministry. So on Sunday mornings, just as always, you can tune into KIOW at 11 a.m. and listen to our full service. If that doesn't work for you, and if you want a visual experience, you can uh, you can go to EmmanuelFamily.com uh, or to our Facebook page at 9.15 on Sunday morning, and you can tune in to uh, a broadcast of our, of our service. If that doesn't work for you, you can watch it anytime after that, anytime after the, the Sunday 9.15 worship service. Now again, those are worship services that are going to be carried out and conducted uh, both by live stream and by recording. And so you won't see people in the audience, um, but you will be the audience. And you can pray along, you can participate, you can sing along, you can stand when we normally stand, you can sit when we normally sit. Uh, you make it as real for yourself as you wish. Now let me say this about, about uh, worship. During this time of online uh, experience and radio experience, we will not... We will not be inviting you to go to your cupboard and get your wine and your bread uh, and then having communion virtually. Um, in, our, um, in our little document called The Use of the Means of Grace, we proclaim that, that the sacraments are shared within community. And so uh, while you might be able to do that uh, in your home with others, um, it's, for now, at least, it's reserved, uh, it's reserved for the gatherings of those who come together intentionally as, as children of God, as the body of Christ. And so you will not be experiencing that. And, and my encouragement there is twofold. Let this be a time when hunger grows within you. Hunger grows within you for the sacrament of God, for, uh, for that... Uh, palpable and and real uh, bread and wine uh, with, with uh, in which we find Christ's presence in with and under uh, that sacrament let that hunger for the sacrament grow within you so that the next time we're together uh, you can be refreshed and filled my other encouragement is for us to think on and reflect on and concentrate on the sacrament of baptism for it's in baptism that we come into this relationship with God, that we become children of God, and, 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 and we have that assurance. We have that assurance that we are freed and forgiven, that we are reborn children of God, held in God's hands forever, and nothing, nothing will ever change that. And so, so let's concentrate on baptism as we, as we uh, find ourselves in this wilderness uh, during this Lenten season. The second thing I want to say is that um, we have, we are switching to online, the best we can, online um, opportunities for children's education uh, and uh, uh, youth programming. Pastor uh, Zach will be in contact with confirmation students and, and, your, and parents, uh, giving some assignments for you to do as students to help keep you engaged and help keep you moving forward. Um, Natasha Banta will be putting out uh, to parents uh, information and um, Sunday school lessons that you can do at home. We, we may try to do some videos around uh, some of that teaching. Um, but... I would encourage you as parents and grandparents to make life as normal as you can for your children. I know they're not going to school right now, so uh, help them. Do a Sunday school lesson on, on Wednesday night. Uh, if what we give you doesn't work, do something that works for you as a family. Get out a devotional book or your Bible and get into God's Word. Use the, the Faith 5 practices. Um, that, we, that we've talked about in the past, those practices of sharing your highs and lows, of reading God's Word and talking about how that Word not only related and applied to the people of, the old, of old, but how that Word applies to us, to you. 
Um, and then pray together and then bless one another. Uh, a, a high school ministry uh, more than likely will meet online from time to time. And so high schoolers be, be looking for information again from Pastor Zach on that. Our Wednesday night meals have been suspended until further notice. Um, we are, however, moving forward with our program that is in full swing called Square Meals. If you or someone you know uh, is hungry, in need of food, send them to the church. We have frozen meals uh, ready and prepared to send home with people. More than likely, you'll just have to take them out of their uh, foil container, put them in a microwave or in the oven for a, little, a few minutes, and then uh, they'll be ready to eat. All of, this is, uh, all of this is in place now until further notice. Um, and I don't want to get into speculating when that might be. But we as uh, leaders of the church are uh, looking uh, at least through Easter. Um, but if we could have Easter together, what a wonderful thing that would be. But we will keep you informed about that week by week as we move closer uh, to that date, which is... Um, Sunday, April 12th. Again, I, I just encourage you uh, to keep life as normal as you can for yourselves and others, uh, but also I encourage you to continue to deepen uh, your relationship with God's Word. And so again, I invite you into this lesson from First Peter and pray that that it sustains you, uh, that you sense that you have this crown of righteousness that has been given to you by Jesus, uh, and that you continue to move forward in faith. Let me say that if, if you're feeling despair, worried, if you're feeling overwhelmed, uh, if, if you... Um, if you need someone to talk to or pray with you, please call the church. Please reach out to Pastor Zach or myself. Um, reach out to a neighbor. Uh, don't, don't despair in your own home. The other encouragement I would give is limit your time of news watching. I know for many of our seniors it's tempting to sit and watch and watch and watch, but I know from personal experience that that can just be over overwhelming and overloading. It just becomes too much after a while. So get out a good book. The Bible's a great place to start, but get out a novel. Uh, get, get into uh, an old hobby that you've done in the past, some crocheting or knitting or quilt making, or get into something other than watching the news 24 hours a day, because that, uh, that will overwhelm you and depress you. I do want to thank your church council for their support and good work during this time. They're making good decisions. Uh, we're, we're debating things. We don't always agree on the, the exact direction to take, but we're, uh, we're working together and it's, it's good. It's good to be uh, together with, with your church council and uh, to help this church move forward. I do also want to thank our staff. Um, everybody's just been great doing their jobs, kind of, kind of, um, making it up as they go in a sense, but, but communicating with you, I hope that you're finding that your, that your communication needs are being met. Again, if they're not, please call and reach out. Let us know where those gaps are. But again, thank you to the staff for all that they've done and are doing. Special thanks to Pastor Zach and for uh, Ben for helping us get these worship service to, services together uh, so that we can continue to be together uh, in some semblance over the next weeks. Um, again, offerings, um, we just can't take a virtual offering, uh, but if, uh, if you are able, and as you are able, and as God gives you the ability, continue to support your church financially. Um, I want to say that we are uh, go coming into this thing in, in very good financial shape, uh, but as you know, uh, cash flow is always a church's biggest struggle, and so um, mail in your offerings uh, or Drop them by. You can certainly do that. Jackie is here at regular business hours, um, 8 o'clock in the morning till 5 o'clock in the evening. Uh, you can also give online. You can go to our website and, and give an offering. And um, we don't apologize for asking you to do that. 
But we do, we do say this, I do say this. It, again, we know that there are hard times for some people, business owners um, or um, others may lose your job or be, or be uh, underemployed in the next few months. And, and so again, we want to give you permission in this time to let others carry you uh, if, if, uh, if those kinds of things are happening to you. On the other hand, um, if God, uh, can, as God continues to provide uh, for those of us who can, let us be generous and uh, joyful uh, in our giving, not only to the church, but we'd like to see our Good Samaritan Fund um, bolstered because we know that we anticipate that that's going to be used even more heavily than it has been in the past. So um, we want to be able to help people when they come and have a legitimate need. So again, thank you for your prayers. Thank you for your uh, support, for your understanding. And together we'll get through this. And my, my hope and prayer is, is that uh, in a matter of weeks, uh, we'll be together again uh, face to face and be able to shake hands and hug one another and continue to build community uh, in the name and likeness of Jesus Christ. Until, until then, be well. Uh, be ready to respond to your neighbors who who may find themselves in hopelessness or uh, fear or in the shadows. Be ready to give testimony uh, of your faith to the goodness of God. So again, join us on Wednesday night live stream on our website or join us Sunday morning either on the radio or uh, through the videos that we will be posting. Thank you and God bless you.